From the historic Max Senate Studios in Silver Lake, California, it's Rough Draft with Reza Aslan. Tonight, we have acclaimed writers Tim Kring and Gideon Rapp. And musical guest, Allison Sudol. You know, he used to jump out of airplanes with a gun. Never jump. I was always pushed out of the airplane. I was always... You're kind of a badass. All right, all right, all right, all right. I'll see you guys out there. Yeah, see you out there. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please give an enthusiastic round of applause for Reza Aslan. Thank you. Hey, let's go. How are you? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome to Rough Draft. I'm your host, Reza Aslan. We bring the best authors, poets, screenwriters, songwriters, and journalists to the historic Max Senate Studios for a lively conversation about writing and the writer's life. Tonight, we have a special episode of Rough Draft. It's with the theme of collaboration. Here to talk about that, we have two of the most successful writers working in Hollywood today. Tim Kring and Gideon Raff are here. That's right. You know Tim as the creator of shows such as Crossing Jordan, Touch, and Heroes. Giddy, of course, is the Emmy Award-winning writer, director, producer, probably best known for his massively successful Israeli television series, Prisoners of War, and the even more massively successful American version of it, Homeland. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Tim and Giddy have come together to collaborate on uh, Save the Cheerleader from Hamas. No, it's not called, no, I'm just kidding. It is, uh, it's called Dig. Uh, for those of you unfamiliar with the show, it's uh, basically an archeological murder mystery set in Israel that uh, uncovers a 2,000 year old religious conspiracy. Think the Da Vinci Code, but with a lot more Jews. That's really the way to, uh, you know, by the way, I'm, thanks. What we really needed was more drama coming out of Israel. That's great. We here at Rough Draft are fascinated by the idea of creative collaboration, which is why we're such big TV fans. TV, of course, is perhaps the quintessential collaborative process, right? You've got all these people in a room together, bouncing ideas off each other, pitching ideas, shaping a story, sometimes even writing a script together. Uh, it's kind of like a family. If you think about it, the writer's room is sort of like Thanksgiving dinner, right? You've got the entire family in the kitchen trying to make this spectacular meal, but you have different tastes and different personalities, different egos, and you know now your sister's gluten-free, so she's screwing it up for everybody. <laughs> you have, of course, the young people. We call them uh, staff writers in the writer's room. They, they're the ones who haven't learned that they should just shut up and listen. They haven't figured that out yet. You have the older kids, the executive producers. They're the ones who think they know everything. They don't. You have the asshole uncle who just like comes in and out of the kitchen for no reason and is constantly pushing everybody's buttons. Uh, we call them the network. Uh, <laughs> Boom. Uh, and then, of course, you have the matriarch, the mom, the person in charge. She's the one who's making sure that everybody's happy, that everyone's being served. And that's what we call the showrunner. So now, imagine Thanksgiving dinner, but with two moms. And both of them have brought their own turkey to cook. That's what we're going to talk about tonight. And we have two great guests to talk about it. So please welcome to the Rough Draft stage, Tim Kring and Gideon Raff. How are you guys doing? Careful it's so good to see you. It was hot down there. It's hot up here, too. I'm curious. I just like right off the bat want to know if you guys are just sick to death of each other by now. Are you, are you just, just like madly in love? Not, yeah. Is that right? Yes. We. Yeah. We Lisa, fight. is that okay with you? He's the other. Yeah? He is the other love of my life. <laughs> He's the other love of your life. He's the other man in my life. The thing is, is that <laughs> you're both 
like fiercely independent writers. Giddy, I know it, we've, we've had conversations. You're not the biggest fan of necessarily of collaborating. Oh, I think collaboration sucks people. ass. Yeah, it's the worst, right? It's the worst. <laughs> Absolutely, unless you do it with someone like Tim. Absolutely. But um, you guys didn't know each other before you started working with We didn't, but I was no. a huge fan. How did you guys meet? How did that work? Rick Rosen, our, our mutual agent, introduced us to one another. There was this project, Dig, that, that Gideon had sort of birthed the, uh, the genesis of. We decided to write the script on spec, which means we didn't get paid for it. And we just sat, usually in Tim's yeah. office, and, and threw ideas and... We didn't really have that pressure that you have to, to make it succeed right out of the gate. And yeah. so that allowed us to kind of get to know one another without, you know, feeling like it was our job to do At it. At the same time, though, you're both... I mean, you guys both deal in such big stories. And I wonder if there was a fear at all that there would be too much weight on this story, right? That the, the two of you coming together, you know, you've got the creator of Heroes and the creator of Homeland, and that Why just seems... Why do you look at me when you put too much weight? I, that's, too that's what worries me. <laughs> you look fantastic, Thank you very way. much, yeah, you look amazing. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Yeah. We share sensibilities, we get, uh, we, we like the same type of storytelling, but also uh, we assembled a group of writers in, in the writer's room. And some we had some of which are here. Right. Yes, Carol, Carol Barbie, Barbie is yeah, here. here. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Amazing and talented Carol Barbie. And I found that you came to this room completely with no ego. We all cared and were passionate about the story. We just wanted the best idea to be on the wall. Um, and we didn't care who it came from at all. So, and it was just a, a, a group of people trying to create a show together. Not is that the, the, the poison that makes it bad? Is it ego? I think it, uh, yeah, yeah, ego is part it of is. it. Yeah. You know, my last um, couple of projects were big, complicated projects, and you have to let other people in. So by letting go, you you kind of learn that there's a sort of one and one equals you know four or six mm -hmm. or twelve and. There's something really kind of fascinating about that process. And you know, when you take your, your own ego out of it, it feels a bit more like a project in an artistic way. And yet this town is just a town of egos, right? Yeah, yeah. ego is a huge part of it. And I think you know, the longer that I've worked in writer's rooms, the more I realize that uh, a generosity is kind of the, one of the biggest uh, traits that I think you need to have. You need to be able to be big, being big enough to to be very quiet at certain times and big enough of spirit. But there's gotta be times where you conflict, right? Yeah. Where you both have it. I mean, like, well, how does the tiebreaker yeah, yeah. work? But I don't not, wanna be sexist and say who's the, who's the not, mom and who's the dad. What I mean to say is who's top and who's bottom <laughs> is, what I'm trying, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> who's versatile. pitching and who's catching. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's um, pitching, who's catching. I'm not interested in, enough <laughs> in the, I mean, I, I, in the, the trying to is, dig yourself out of that one. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, no, I'm gonna. I will. I will dig myself <laughs> out elegantly here. That I find that the process is more important than the result because the result right. will drive you crazy. It, it, you can never really invest in that. It's always a disappointment. And so the process then becomes really the part that I think is the most interesting part. Absolutely. And I don't want to. I don't want to get in a situation where it gets so uncomfortable that the process is, is damaged. is damaged. Yeah. There was a scene where Jason gets shot in the chest. Yeah. And you know how the crews are, whenever there's a stunt or a special effect, yeah. everybody has an opinion and everybody's yeah. like, I think the blood should come out of this and I think this. Yeah. And I said, listen guys, I was shot twice in the chest during the army. I know how it looks, I know what it is. <laughs> it's like this and like this and like this. And everybody got to quiet and just did what I said. I was never shot. <laughs> I was never shot. It was a big lie, but it shut everybody up. So Tim, you're talking about your career for a minute. You've been labeled a master of sci-fi, king of the nerds. Yeah, which is ridiculous. I don't actually have a question. I just want everyone to know that you're the king of the nerds. You know, the ironic thing is, is that this show, Crossing Jordan, that I did in the 2001, I think was my uh, 47th paying job as a writer. And Dig is probably my 50th, 15 years later. So it sort of shows you how many jobs I actually had before. You started on Night Raider. Yes. Dun -dun, dun -dun, cool? dun -dun. Dennett, I love Knight Rider. That, I mean, who didn't love Knight Come Rider? on. So the point is, you know, there were all these other things. And so, you know, you have the one thing that, that hits and then you get identified as that, as as that, that thing. Guy. But then you, don't you feel like a little bit of a 
responsibility to the genre? I mean, do you feel as though everyone's kind of looking to you to be the, the sci-fi master? I hope not. I mean, <laughs> yeah. listen, I, I, you know, I am interested in lots of things. I think it came from having a career that started off where I had to take any job that came along. So I had to become, you know, when somebody said, can you write a horror film? Yes, of course. I can write <laughs> yeah, a the answer is always and, yes. Um, I think a lot of my interest in genre just came out of the necessity of having to, having to learn how to write yeah. in, those, in those genres. In a weird way, the same is true with you, Giddy. You've kind of are known for a particular genre too, ripped from the headlines, geopolitical, Middle East, yeah. thriller. Just like Tim said, I think, uh, and we both share this, what's interesting about stories is the characters. And that's what's interesting to explore. And that's what you can put them in any genre. If you have good stories, if you have a truth, if you have a, a character that's, you know, that the audience wants to invite into their homes every week and you want to spend two years you know, uh, uh, exploring, it doesn't matter what genre it's in. Yeah, but the thing about these two genres is that they both come, uh, whether you like it or not, with this very zealous fan base, right? right? I mean, right, if you get something wrong on Heroes, yep. all of a sudden you're getting death threats. Yeah. And I get death threats. And all the you time. get death threats just because you're Israeli. Yes, yes. yeah, that's just all Absolutely. Yeah, I mean. No, but in the, you do actually. This is the funny thing is like everything you do is being. Uh, viewed through this geopolitical lens, right? Where are you Islamophobic, or are you anti-Semitic, are you a self-hating Jew, or do you hate Arabs? All and the truth is you hate everyone. <laughs> yeah, I know you. You hate them all equally. <laughs> so those of you who don't know this, is that Gideon is like the biggest thing to have come out of Israel since Jesus Christ. Uh, I mean, you are. You're like, the, everybody in Israel is like, Gideon Raph. Being in uh, Israel with Giddy is like, yeah, like being with the mayor. Yeah, like the being mayor. with Tim at Comic-Con. Like, yeah, like, like being with Tim at Comic-Con. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is kind of a sensitive topic. Uh, yes, I'm gay. And it's, uh, are you, do you want to come out of the closet yes. for, for everyone? Yes? I just uh, did. Gideon just came out of the closet. Giddy's husband is here, Udi. Udi, Giddy's really Udi and I just husband. celebrated 16 years together. 16 years, yeah. The brains in the family. Sixteen. Uh, Sixteen. Most boring gays ever. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm curious about the role that social media has now, that storytelling has to be active and participatory right. for it to actually capture people's imagination. Yeah, welcome it, to our world. But that's frightening. Idea. I mean, yeah. it's a little bit frightening, isn't it, as a creator? It's this idea of collaboration. Yeah. By allowing other people's voices into it to allow them to become a part of the storytelling, they have an investment inside of it. They dig deeper into it. They, they look for, for clues, and they share things. They want to guess and be right or be wrong, and all of that. They have ownership. They, they have, have loyalty. Exactly. And so I think part of this idea of a kind of a transmedia approach is to, to build a big enough world that can allow people uh, to come in and become a part of it. And that's a, that's a really exciting way to tell a story. In Dig, USA used it in a very big way in promoting the show. We collaborated with a company called Wattpad. 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 W-A-T-T-Pad. And one of our writers wrote a prequel to Dig that was read by almost a million people. Amazing. And yeah. it makes them feel a very big part of the show. And they comment on it, and they twi tweet about it. I don't Twitter, so I don't know what the right Twi thing. Twi Twitter about they, it. They're twats. <laughs> they twat about it. Um, whatever they do, um, they feel very connected to the show, which is a good thing, but it doesn't affect the mothership. So, Alex, what is your favorite book of all time? <laughs> Do I win? The Bible, the Bible. <laughs> My second favorite book would be The Prophet. Comes and then from. what are you reading now? What I talk about when I talk about running by Murakami. Murakami, yeah. I'm just obsessed with Murakami. I'm obsessed with this quiet, sort of dreamlike uh, state because this book is an autobiography and it's much more about his process as a writer yeah. and I found that really interesting. We always like to end our rough draft episodes with what we call the five questions. And are you ready? All right, we'll start with Giddy. What is your favorite book? A Fine Balance. Fine Balance, I love that book. Well, I'm still partial to Catch on the Ride, but I've been reading this book called Zealot that I'm really... <laughs> I've heard of that book. Razzo, Razzo Rizzo, something yeah. like that. 
uh, also about it, this other Jew. Yes. Yeah. Uh, what book are you reading now, Giddy? The Truth About the Harry Corbert Affair. Besides Zealot. Uh, no, uh, the, that's the, the honest truth is that on my iPad, when I click on the high books, Zealot is what opens up, and I'm still. <laughs> it's a bug. <laughs> right What's your writing process? Wake up in the morning and uh, face it. Do you have like, a it. certain number of hours that you have to do? Yeah, I do usually half the day until like till lunchtime at my house does writing. Does that include surfing for porn or not? Is, like, is that course separate? It does. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Masturbation is part of writing. <laughs> Whoever tells you it's not is a lie. <laughs> yeah. So. Tim, uh, do you masturbate? I mean, uh, <laughs> what's your what's your writing process? I curled in a fetal position and crying a lot. <laughs> That's part mm -hmm. of it. I don't have a process a lot of times when I'm busy because it's whenever I can. I do prefer morning. I like sitting outside and smoking cigar while I work, and so it's contingent on the on good weather. Giddy, what's the best writing advice you ever got? Never give up. Doug Lyman said that to me, but also I think Winston Churchill. I think said Churchill, that. yeah. I think, yeah. I think, um, I Doug, think Doug stole that. I think that. Winston said it to yeah. Doug, and Doug said it to me. <laughs> Tim, Tim, best writing advice you ever got? Uh, be nice to the guy who parks your car. <laughs> be nice to the guy who parks your car. Yes. Because this is uh, Hollywood, and in Hollywood, that guy might run Lionsgate in like six years. Oh, I yeah. guess because he can scratch your car. <laughs> also, also he could, yeah. The best advice that you can give uh, a, a young, struggling writer. Never give up. Never give up. Take the note. Take the nice. note. Do the note. Going back is a good thing. You will find things that flesh out and make the, the project better. So take the note. Take the note. Ladies and gentlemen, Gideon Raff and Tim Kring. <laughs> and now, please welcome our special musical guest, Allison Sudol. It doesn't hurt me Do you wanna feel like I feel? Do you wanna know it doesn't hurt me? Do you wanna hear about the deal I'm making to you? It's you and me And if only could we could deal Says we run up that road, run up that hill, we run up that building. If I only could, don't hurt me. See how deep the bullet lies. No way.
Say if I only could make a deal with God, I'd get on a swap of places. We're running up the road, we're running up the hill with no problems, no problems. Say if I only could. Is you? Is you and me? Oh. Alison Sudo, everyone. Red J on accompaniment. Thank you, Tim King. Thank you, Ginny and Raph. Thank you, Max Senate Studios. Good night, Silver Lake. Hi, Maria. Um, in the spirit of collaboration, could the three of you collaborate together, and what would it be? Let's do, like, Muslim heroes. Exactly. There we go. Yeah. I would do that in a heartbeat. Uh, yeah. Let's call it ISIS. <laughs> call it ISIS. <laughs> oh, guys. wow, the room turned. <laughs> Man, ISIS these, is a comedy killer. have a little problem. Yeah, on yeah. So Gideon and I, I have to say, like, we have a really good time razzing each other. So, for instance, when he came out onto the stage, I actually thought about saying, well, since you're Israeli, would you like my half of the stage as well? <laughs> and I would have said, well, it belonged to me before. There you go. There you go. There you go. <laughs>